How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at The Amityville Terror. Not horror, terror. Uh, this is from 2016, directed by Michelangelo and stars Nicole Tompkins, uh, Kaiwi uh, Lehman, Kim Nielsen, and Amanda Barton. And this is one of those unofficial Amityville movies. Uh, I feel that with terror, and like I talked about previously with The Amityville Haunting, if you don't change the movie's title up too terribly much, it does have a higher success rate of getting people to believe it's the real thing, you know? So yeah, it's a mockbuster, but I know lots of people thought this was one of the real ones. It's not. Amityville's a real town. Anyone can set their movie in it. Um, but I've seen a ton of these mockbusters. Like, I've been watching a lot lately, and I will say this one did have more effort behind it. It actually had a little bit of a budget, they had a script, and they tried a few things. You know, like, there's a conspiracy angle. Okay, that's kind of different. And the girl's riding around on her dirt bike, and she's got a crossbow. They're trying to make a cool character here. There's some effort. It's an actual, real movie, which is a really low bar of praise to say, hey, it's an actual movie. But so many of these other Amityville movies are, like, barely movies, you know? They're micro-budget factory films with, you know, just, hey, let's pad out the runtime with whatever's cheap, get to that 75 or so minute mark and call it a day. There's a lot of factory films in the unofficial Amityville. This, there was some effort. Sadly, it's just really dull and forgettable. I mean... There's several subplots that kind of pop up and don't really go anywhere significant. And the scares don't really work either. You know, there's several times where you can tell, like, okay, now the movie's trying to be scary, but that horror atmosphere doesn't really permeate through the whole thing. If you do a horror movie, you need to have some people on the team that absolutely care, because y you can tell when it's amateurish, and... Like, the cinematography is clean and standard, not scary. And the scare sequences definitely do feel like, okay, now we're going to take the time to try to do something scary. And it usually just results in, yeah, I get what you're going for. And there's, like, awkward little stumbles and, you know, like, CGI fire. You know, there's they're trying, but it doesn't permeate, you know, it it kind of feels soulless, you know, and you really do want passion. The passion behind a horror maker really does shine through, and you need someone that legitimately cares. Uh, one of the scares that kind of embodies the movie in regards to both not being scary and things that don't go anywhere, there's one scare I really want to talk about. There's a guy, he kind of knows what's going on, so he shows up to the Amityville house, and through the window he sees a possessed person holding a knife behind an unsuspecting potential victim. He pounds on the windows, he screams, no one inside can see or hear him. There's some effort there, that's interesting. What's gonna happen? Flippin' nothing. The guy, when he sees he can't do anything, just buzzes off, and the person about to do the stabbing just doesn't stab. The scene gets to an interesting place and then goes into nothingness. <sighs> it's, it's frustrating. There is also one other thing I almost forgot to mention. Towards the end of the movie, no major spoilers, but major characters in this movie just die off screen. Like, it happens more than once, and I'm like... No, that, that's, that's a sequence you could have had, that's a motion you could have had, but you have big, important characters that just get found later dead, and I'm like, that is a huge mistake. Again, this movie had something behind it. It had an actual crew, it had an actual budget, there were people there trying to make a real movie, and it is a real movie, it's just... A case of what could have been, you know? Ultimately, this movie is pretty forgettable, 
it's a real movie, but it's just kind of dull and forgettable. I just watched it and I'm already forgetting large chunks of it. And actually, this is my second time watching this because I watched this in the pre-channel days long ago when this first came out. And after that first watch, the only things I really remembered were a few awkward scenes and the dad's haircut. And that was pretty much it. So despite the fact that because of the name and the cool house, which it doesn't look like this in the movie, but it's a more high profile Amityville mockbuster. It's one that people might actually assume was in the real series. And I see this DVD around quite a bit compared to the other unofficial Amityvilles. And it's just a shame with all that going for it. There's really no substance here. Again, they do try a few things, but it just... It, it's so forgettable. Oh well. Uh, in order to analyze this further, I'm going to talk a bit about the plot. We'll take a look at a few things that work and don't work. I'm not going to do any major spoilers, but from here on, let's dig a little deeper and talk about the plot. We open up with a prologue family. They're getting chased out as the Amityville house absolutely flips out. It's a good enough opening scene, and the mother gets tricked to go back in by what is clearly not really her son with a, a big painted pentagram on his forehead that looks really bad. It's an okay opening, foreshadowing the okay movie to come. And then we get our family. Mom, dad, daughter, they're moving to Amityville because... The grandparents just died, and the parents are having financial stress, so they're going to move in with their sister, and of course, they're going into the Amityville house. But not that Amityville house. This is kind of weird. This movie takes place in Amityville, but the house is on Amity, like that's the street name, and not 112 Ocean Avenue. Like, the, the actual house itself and the DeFeo murders are public domain, but apparently this is in Amityville, but it's a different house. Okay, part of me really likes the idea that Amityville as a city is just haunted, and every little building is going to be haunted, you know, Amityville Haunted Pizzeria, Amityville Laundromat. The idea that there's a second haunted house with its own unique ghost doesn't bug me too much, but it is a little strange. Uh, the sister shows them around, and for whatever reason, they make a big deal that the rooms are painted different colors. No one cares. The house itself is okay, a little older, but not super creepy. The big thing, though, is I was a little confused. Who owned the house? Because it sounded like the sister found it, and she was there for a while, and now the parents are coming in and taking over. It turns out it's a rental property, and they're essentially being roommates. That's okay, it just was a little unclear early on what was happening. It looked like the parents were taking over the sister's house. Now, there's a thing, a, a plot with the sister, where she's a recovering addict of drugs and alcohol, and she's trying to be better now, but she's still a little eccentric. And you think they would do, like, the Evil Dead remake, where they say... You know, if something happens to her, maybe it's a relapse. If she's acting strange, maybe it's a relapse. That's in there for a little bit. They bring it up from time to time, but honestly, what happens more often is the daughter will just flip out and yell at her aunt. Which is not great. Like, when you introduce who's clearly going to be a large part of the movie, I hate to break it to you, but that's your plot now. They seem to say, hey, this is what's going on. This is like where the evil is going to hang out, revolve around this one character. And then they still try to shove her into the background. That's what your movie's about. That's what your focus is. You can't take out such a big piece and then still try to set it aside. The ant really needed much more fleshing out and centering, you know? Whatever. The movie's really about the daughter cruising around on her dirt bike and meeting some mean girls, which are super annoying, or she gets a boyfriend, and then she's gonna solve the mystery. And I said it earlier, there's so many plot points that don't go anywhere. 
like talking about solving the mystery, she finds in her house a surgeon bag. Well, I think the aunt finds it first and then she sees it. And it's got a guy's name on it. And we spend forever trying to figure out what happened to this doctor. And all it pans out to is he went missing. Why did we spend so long on this if all we're going to get to is he went missing? That's just super. There's like, also there's a subplot where the mom and the dad aren't having sex. We don't know why this happened, but it is a thing that comes up from time to time and ultimately doesn't go anywhere significant, but does lead to a super awkward scene that really didn't need to be in the movie. Uh, you get this teenage girl that the daughter could be friends with, right? And she knows, like, crystal magic. And she'll get the daughter a MacGuffin, but ultimately, this girl that should have been, like, one of the daughter's core friends doesn't get introduced into the movie till way later on. And then once she gets the MacGuffin, she's not really super important to the movie anymore. And it's like this whole character could have been a main character, but we're going to shove her aside as well. And we also get like the dad has a job at the auto body shop and one of the persons there is going to be his friend. And you think, okay, he's a main character too, right? The job element and the friend really go nowhere. And again, just leads to one super lame scare. Like the auto body shop scare is so so cheesy and stupid and it's like you get all these stuff elements that should be your plot should be what the movie thrives on they should be substantial they're your meat and potatoes and they just get pushed aside and not focused on it take your plot elements add layers to them make them interesting have focus for goodness sake but ultimately who cares? The main thing there is trying to uncover this Amityville conspiracy, and it's a case of when I say Amityville conspiracy, you all basically know what's going on anyway, and there's things like the clearly evil realtor is actually evil? Yeah, we know. And I think that is also like you should know when your audience knows, right? It ultimately pans out to so-so ending, but overall, the movie is just fine. Like I said, it's got some ideas. It just doesn't know how to flesh them out. It's got some unique elements, but not enough to make it memorable. It has a budget. It's a real movie. It's not a factory film like a lot of other ones. It's just, a, it's just a, a forgettable, dull film that's relatively soulless. Overall whatever despite me saying so much bad about it i think out of the unofficial amityvilles this is like the upper middle so <laughs> we'll see what happens next when we cover more of these anyway though uh to everyone who's watched so far thank you for watching to everyone who's liked and subscribed thank you you really are helping the channel out i'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom this should be my Amityville playlist where you can see me talk about some of the other ones of these. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Amityville playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.